Cardinals president of baseball operations, John Mozeliak, joins us. And yes, that rotation looks a lot different than what they ended 2023 with. In fact, as I'm sure John knows, good morning, by the way. Good nice morning. to see you. Nice to see you both. Uh, you guys have put together the only rotation in baseball now that has four guys that worked at least 180 innings last year. So I would imagine that was part of the plan, huh? It really was. Um, you think back to uh, 2023, we've unpacked in 100 different ways. We know it didn't go well. Um, you know, we tried to figure out where we could improve and rotation was something that was really glaring to us. And so when we were looking at the market, trade market, free agent market, we really identified guys that understood what it was like to go pole to pole, understood what it's like to take the ball. And really from a cultural standpoint, all three of these guys, um, I think will be a great asset in our clubhouse. You know, Matt, you always talk about the old general managers that smoke the cigars and are overweight. And then you had the smooth, the trends. I called him the trendsetter. He changed it all. The smooth look coming in, looking sharp. I'll tell you what, you set a trend of the new generation. You did. Well, thanks, Dad. I appreciate it. You did. That. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll tell you what, I, I love it. I love the fact how he's always presented himself and carried yourself. I, I love it. Well, you know what? The spe you. Speaking of the old guard, though, and Keith Costas just hit me with this. We were talking about Jim Leland getting into the Hall of Fame yesterday. He's got Cardinal DNA in him as well. Absolutely. From his scouting days. What What have your experiences been with Jimmy over the years? Well, like like your point, he's uh, he's baseball through and through. I think uh, you know one of my great mentors in the game was Don Zimmer, and so you know having these types of gentlemen that teach you the game, let you understand it. Obviously, baseball today is modernized. When you think about how we make decisions and and the modern analytics and technology that's in the game, but you still got to play it, and you still have to understand it. And I think Jimmy Leland is is. He exemplified that through and through. And you look at his success, too, in postseason when it mattered most, he was one of the best. You know, John, it, it's an interesting. Yeah, we, we got a great full screen. I'll let this sit for the people for a minute as we talk about Leland. <clears throat> but I want to come back to you, too, as we look at Leland, you know, going in the Hall of Fame. Your last couple of years have been very interesting. You've had Pujols, you had Wainwright, you had Yachty, and you had to manage these guys at the end of their career and how they were going to go out. And all, oftentimes I've heard the saying, don't let a star fall on you. you got to keep that star up. And so obviously when players are at the end, then you're not going to get what you got in the beginning. So how do you manage that as a team? Yeah, I think the saying we always use is like aging superstars can be difficult, right? But, um, you know, I think back to what somebody like an Adam Wainwright or Yachty or Molina meant to our franchise. And, and I think St. Louis is unique in that sense. Like, we just can't turn the page when we start to think their talents are starting to regress because they mean so much to our community and, and really the impact they've made to our team and our city. And so we tend to embrace that maybe more than other places. And when I think back to even just uh, Albert Pujols last year, I mean, how storybook of an ending that was and what he meant to our city. And, you know, he began his career in St. Louis, went away for a while, but came back. And it was uh, something I think everybody realized how magical it was. I'm glad you mentioned that because we, we all know how special baseball is in St. Louis and the relationship that the franchise has with the community there different than anybody else's in the sport. Not to say better. I'm not saying better, Seattle, Boston. I'm not saying that. I'm saying different. <laughs> uh, but so when you can bring a guy back, and you mentioned you can't really turn the pages back, you can flip them around, though. And it feels like you did that with Lance Lynn, who we learned before the show, if he has kind of a good strikeout year by his own standards, he could end the season number three all time in franchise history behind Gibson and Wainwright. I mean, you're, you're uh. bringing back a guy who's technically a free agent, but he's one of your own. In a sense. Yeah, and it's sort of an interesting point because when, when you look at the three guys that we brought back, all of them wanted to be in St. Louis. They all had probably better deals somewhere else, but the, the, the fact that they wanted to pitch in St. Louis, I think, is something that we felt was important. And Lance had a great beginning of his career with the St. Louis Cardinals and obviously went away in free agency. Now we're bringing him back, and we're hoping to capture some of that magic. It's pretty so, neat. So I, I think you're in an interesting spot. I, I, I want to see... Obviously, you went back and looked at last year. You lose 91 games, not where you no, you would be normally, period. I'm sure you weren't happy about that. But you also had a lot of young players you brought in. You had veteran players we just talked about. You had to dissect through. Where are the Cardinals at now? Well, expectations are high. Um, yeah. You don't go and do what we just did 
hoping to just get back to 80 wins. I mean, our expectations are to, to put a real team out there that, that not only will compete for our division, but hopefully play into October. But I think when you look at our club overall, especially from a roster standpoint, we have great balance. Um, obviously, a Mason Wynn, Jordan Walker, these guys are only 22 years old. Yeah. And then you couple that with a, a, a Goldie and an Arenado, we really do feel like we have great balance. And so obviously we're gonna have to have someone step up, someone emerge, to be the next superstar, but you know we have a lot of confidence in our everyday life. I, I love Gorman, and, and it's interesting because he's kind of behind Nolan, and he's stuck with, with where you're at. What do you do with a talent like that? How do you see this with Nolan? Well, I think the key is, is you know, when you're the manager of that club, you're just trying to find these guys at bats. And I think that was one of the frustrations we had last year when we got off that slow start, really couldn't get anybody hot. And I think in mm -hmm. uh, Gorman's case, Brendan Donovan, these are like young, talented players that need every day at bats. And that's going to be the trick for us. The assumption is, John, as you know, I'm sure that uh, you guys have so many great young outfielders that there'll be a deal made at some point involving one of those outfielders. Should we be surprised if there is no deal made involving one of those outfields? Yeah, I do think it would be a surprise if we weren't able to do that. Um, you know, we, we still would like to try to improve our, our bullpen, and if we could use one of those pieces to maybe do that, that's something we'll, we'll definitely try. Um, more importantly, we also just have to clear the slate a little bit because guys are looking for that regular playing time and those regular at-bats, and that's something we need to do. Hey, hey, last thing, John, I know we want to wrap this up with you. How different is it now, winter meetings, than years ago? You've been around long enough. Is it easier now with all the, the ways to communicate with text and everything else to do deals? Or is it better in a situation like this where you can say, hey, come over to my suite, let's sit down and talk? Well, I think, I think the modern winter meetings, it's, it's much more efficient to do deals because you can just use your phone. You can text. And, and so from a speed standpoint or a timing standpoint, this is much more efficient. But it is still nice to see people. I mean, obviously, uh, see you guys on TV all the time, but now doing something face-to-face -face is nice. So there is that human element I think we all welcome. It's nice for us, too, as a matter oh, of fact. Yeah. I love it. But if you're doing a deal with the Dodgers, you can just, you know, do a Zoom, because I don't know if anybody's here wearing <laughs> Dodger blue this week. I have no idea. Anyway, John, we appreciate the visit. <laughs> uh, best to you and your family this holiday season. Good luck in 2024.